Welcome to the Love Story Behind, the show about transforming your heartbreak into creative expression, one artist-inspired journal entry at a time. I'm your host, Minji Zai, founding producer of the Love Story Org, the journaling hub for you to transform your life tragedy into a love story. Our message in heartbreak is, you're not alone, there is nothing wrong with you, there is a point to your pain. On today's episode, Larisa Gosla, the love story behind Listen to Your Heart and Follow. We interview Larisa in the woods of Topanga, California, about the mystery of sound healing, attuning to nature's ability to heal us from the most basic organic sources like sunlight, birds, and breath, and the ability to find your authentic voice. In the second part of this podcast episode, we'll be reading excerpts of journal entries written by our organization's journal artists, inspired by the very interview you are about to listen to. You can find both Larisa's full interview and all the Larisa-inspired journal entries at thelovestory.org. You can find Larisa's creative expressions at larisagoslamusic.com. Link below. Your role as a journal artist is to listen for the similarities. If anything resonates with you throughout the interview, your task is to pause this podcast, pull the quote Larisa said directly into your diary, and begin journaling uninterrupted for 15 minutes or more. Let's begin. I didn't know who I could trust. I had kind of adopted um, a viewpoint and a perspective that was uh, causing me to doubt in who I could trust and open up to and expose my deepest feelings to. And so a lot of that was really hard for me and I had a lot of um, thoughts about what's the point? What's the point, you know? And, um, I just, you know, going going back to that, um, I just feel so grateful for my community. Like, without my community, my friends, I would not be where I am today. I, I feel so blessed by who I'm surrounded by. And because of that, I had a particular friend who was letting me stay with him and I would wake up in the morning and I would literally, I would, you know, just start so simple, start so basic and just take a breath and look outside and be thankful for the wind on my face and be grateful for the sun on my skin and the birds in my ears and like just starting so basic, you know, like if I felt like I had nothing and everything was wiped away and it was like, okay, well, what do I have to be grateful for? And just sitting in the present moment and grounding into you know, the beauty of nature and all that we have in that. And um, that's really what started to pull me, pull me, pull me out of that was just going back to the basics of um, how can I be grateful that and a lot of prayer and uh, internal diving into my own essence and my own experience and uh, what I was experiencing at that time. Was there music involved, either your music or other people's music, that kind of um, pulled you through? And what was that experience like? What was your relationship with music during the time you were scared and doubtful Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and afraid? Mm -hmm. I mean... I had my guitar, so I re- I relied on that quite a bit as being my instrument um, and source of inspiration. Um, there's there was music from dear friends of mine that I would listen to um, that allowed me to continue to have a, a wider perspective on everything. Um, and honestly, the music of you know nature 
and just breathing that in, that was really so um, important for me and provided me a lot of inspiration. Yeah. yeah. What was your first love like and what was your heart first heartbreak like? Oh, well, um, I, I've had a heartbreak with every person I've been involved with, you know, um, to all varying degrees, of course. Um, some more intense than others. Um, I, I've always, I don't know, I don't, I'm having a hard time answering that question. Um, especially if I, if it's something I've moved on from, it's, it's hard to revisit that in a way, especially, you know, in a relationship that was so long ago. Um, was it, was it always intense? Falling in love and then falling out of it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, especially when you, you know, feel very strongly for someone, um, to have the courage to dive into that is really powerful. And when that's met on the same level as you, there's a lot of, you know, beauty and, and magic in that. Um, and so then when things, you know, don't work out, there's, there's the cutting of the heart cords that takes time, you know? And, um, so there's, um, heartbreak in, in every separation. Yeah. It's vulnerable being an artist, you know, you literally are laying your heart and your emotions and your experiences for everyone to hear and listen to and but it also takes a certain amount of strength and courage and being able to do that and saying this is my truth if you wrote this song with your truth let's hope so and then not allowing anyone else's you know opinions because they're always going to be there to affect what was true for you so and that's been a journey of my own I've had to go through you know honest honest truth and um, authenticity through my songwriting. Yeah. Like, let's talk about that. Like, what kind of, um, what kind of hurdles have you personally gone through when you first put out your songs? Well, uh, the whole thing has been a journey. I mean, again, since I was five, I always knew, you know, I was like, I came here to do this. And I always had that, you know, mission for myself. And then, um, growing up and doing it you you know you hear people say like oh you're not good enough or you know all these things um that people tell you and you know you kind of lose like your sense of um well am I good enough you know you doubt yourself and your ability and um so for a long time I was in my own way of my my songwriting and my ability because of my lack of belief in myself and, and what I felt like I was here to give. And it wasn't until I finally came around to that and said, no, this is, feels right in every sense of my being that I could stand and, in front of an audience and, and deliver, deliver that. Um, and sorry, you, what, the question what one changed? more time. Like you said, finally, I, I finally came to accepting myself and, and getting out of your way. Um, usually that happens when there's some kind of big event or big change or mm. something really, something to jar us mm. out of our comfort mm -hmm, zone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Could you recall anything that particularly happened that made you finally say like, F it, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> oh gosh. I, I, so I feel like a lot of little things put together, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't say that there was like one pivotal moment, but. I mean, in a way, I could go back to my experience last year and that feeling of having nothing and starting over. I, it's kind of like, you know what, this is, this is my life and I'm going to do what I love and I'm going to not let anything else take that from me because that's what makes me feel good. And that's how I feel like when I'm living in my joy, I can give back. When you do anything in joy, you're giving back, you know? Um, so, yeah, and just a journey of, like, believing in myself and um, 
even if I don't feel that it's perfect, because I, as an artist, I never feel like it's perfect, you know, but being okay to showcase that and show that and know that that's perfect as it is, not being perfect. Um, so, you know, so it's just been the whole journey all together. You know, there was a certain point when um, I would be so overcome by my emotions, I wouldn't even be able to sing, you know? And so it's been this really big journey of um, finding my voice and finding um, my melodies through guitar. And that was honestly guitar. Once I picked that up and had that as an accompaniment, that really allowed me to find my, my own voice because I stopped singing other people's songs and trying to be them but I allowed my own authentic expression to come through and that's really when I found my own center. Did you find a special resonance? Something that directly speaks to you? Something you have personally experienced? A kindred truth? We'll be playing Listen to Your Heart and Follow from Larisa's album I Remember. Utilize this time to reflect and begin journaling. Spirit 
Our first journal entry is called Crowded, written by Katie Andrews. It's all an experience of life, inspired by Larissa Gosla. Crowded, fiction based on a true frustration with crowds. Crowded buses, crowded trains, the city is too much. You thought the countryside would be better, but there were still people. Tourists, you can hear them a mile off. Children wandering around and blocking paths, buggies and luggage clogging the lines. Sophie sticks raised and blocking views. Trash everywhere. You want to scream and be alone in the places. You long for the silence and open space to move, your anxiety and frustration in the crowd mounting. Their presence feels inconsiderate and consuming. But you're one of them, aren't you? You're on the tour and in the places to see and experience. You've blocked paths to get that one shot. You try and convince yourself that you're not taking up that much room, and you try to stay out of people's way, but from the outside, you're just like every other tourist. Your footsteps across the rugged land and along worn streets slowly eroded, just like the other hundreds around you. You're not always a tourist. Some days you're just trying to go about your day while navigating around disturbances. And do they not also deserve to enjoy and experience the places of the world like you? Aren't they just trying to have fun and soak up as much of the sights like you? The world doesn't solely belong to you. You intersect with people whether you want to or not. You're an individual in a crowd, and you are a part of the crowd. Our next journal entry is called Purge, also written by Katie Andrews. I realized that I am fully living my dreams. It just didn't look like how I thought it would when I was five years old. So it's letting go of what my life should look like for me to be successful. Inspired by Larissa Gosla. Purge. Fiction based on a true purging of pent-up feelings. Just chill out. It all came to a head after that. You felt disrespected in that moment and treated like a child. The feelings of loneliness and resentment about feeling forgotten and overlooked just built up. It simmered in you over the weekend. You sent out your newsletter full of feelings and didn't let it sit. So, Monday you had to confront the consequences of your rashness. It was good and bad, but ultimately necessary. You know you should have been more open with how you felt, but you weren't at that stage until you burst. You didn't think you could trust the person you spoke with to hear your heart and make you feel validated and heard. You pushed yourself into a corner of lies and self-criticisms, the cage of your own making, your cry for help. And not everything they said settled in your heart and made you feel good, but it was necessary. What's necessary isn't always comforting. You didn't realize how much gunk had built up, how sticky your heart had gotten. The darkness had come in again, and it wasn't until you shone a light on it that you realized how messy things were inside. It all had to erupt and splatter across the walls for you to see the problem. Your body had to purge and throw up all the negative things you had put into it for you to feel weak and empty so you could be filled again. It wasn't fun. It was exhausting. It was the breaking point. But now it's time to pick up the pieces and fix them. The days are still hard, like walking on wobbly legs after a weight has been lifted. It's moment by moment, taking it day by day. You're not at the end yet, but you know there will be an end where you come out stronger. Thank you for listening to the love story behind. We hope you journal your heart open. I'm your host, Minji Zai. For more intimate, artist-inspired interviews and journal entries to journal from, please go to www.thelovestory.org. Keep calm and journal on. 
Listen to your heart and follow.